I'm Jason Deer. I'm Sammy G. And we are Dyson Dragons. Please take a look at the video description below. There you will see our timestamps as well as some information as to what the video is about. So stay tuned, it's coming up. Enjoy the show. What up gamers? Today on Dyson Dragons we are reviewing Scott Pilgrim's precious little card game designed by Keith Baker, published by Renegade Game Studios in collaboration with Oni Press. We have the Comic-Con edition currently which you can see has different box art than the regular edition. This box art was actually done by the creator of the comic book series, Brian Lee O'Malley. So what this game is, it's a, they say it's a deck building game, 30 to 60 minutes long. One to four players play competitively or cooperatively. We're going to go right into a playthrough. We're going to show you how to play, and then we're going to be following with a video review. If you want to skip just to the review, you can see it right down below in the description. So. Grab your drink, grab a buddy, and let's play Scott Pilgrim's yep. Precious Little Card Game. We're taking it to the table. Enjoy. Ah, it's delicious. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to open up the box. We're going to do a quick setup. I'm going to show you all the cards that you will find inside the little game. And first thing you're going to see right away is, in fact, the rule book. So I always say keep this handy, especially if it's your first time playing. What's actually very neat here is they give you a tutorial mode. So with the tutorial mode, you're going to look for very certain cards. Uh, it's a great way to learn how to play the game to go through the various phases. For now, we're going to set that aside. Right underneath, you're going to see a couple of the character cards as well as the evil X's. Remember, and we're going to be mentioning this a lot, everything is double-sided. So with Ramona Flowers here on top, you'll see some combos that we can do in the combat phase. We'll get into that after. As well as some of the powers, and it actually tells you how to place certain cards. So we're going to take, for our purposes, Scott, we're going to take Ramona. The other thing we're going to use, just because they're on top, is the Katianagi Twins as the evil X. For the setup phase, what we're going to do is look very carefully for the character cards as denoted by the character icon on top. So everyone has seven uh, character cards as well as three drama. So Scott is on top and then we have Ramona. Again, the seven cards with the drama. Everything else, if you're not playing with other characters, don't worry about it. You can discard those or just put them back in the box. The other thing we have to set our plot line for the game. Now with the plot line, you're going to see additional drama cards with no character icons. So we're going to set these aside. And the other thing is you're going to take all the plot line, you're actually going to divide it into two piles. But more importantly, what I want to show you is the different cards that we have available here. So make yourself a little bit more room. And here are some of the cards that you're going to come across in the game. You have story cards or plot line cards that we have over here. On the back side of the card, because remember everything is double sided, we actually have combat. Then we have challenge cards as denoted by the orange color and typically if you flip it to the other side you're going to see what are called power up cards. So I'm going to explain a little bit about what all these cards do. For the story cards, the first thing I'm going to introduce is the resources that they can either generate or the resources that it costs to actually acquire the card. So here, the little heart shape is called Romance. That's the, uh, well, it's not by the red, but that's how much you would have to pay to actually acquire the card. You need to have five Romance. On the left side of the card here, what you have is how much it could generate a turn. And here we see it could generate either three Romance or three Music. Now, you can't do both. You could choose one or the other. On this particular card, we have the other resource that's available, which is work. So this would cost four work to acquire. And if you play it in the turn, it would generate two work resources. On the flip side of the cards, what we have is combat. So this is how you would defeat challenges. You would need to get more uh, or as high uh, of a combat rating as possible. Now here, it would still cost five romance to acquire the card, but here it says button B. How does this come into effect is if you can actually play a combo on the written on the bottom of the card here. So if I were to play the hipster kick first, followed by the crab rangoon, I would be able to draw one card as per the combat card ability. There's not much more to this side, but know that when you're playing it or drawing it from the plot line, you can place it either side that you choose. The other card, as I said, is the challenge card. So here we have a giant robot. 
in the challenge, what we have is how much it actually takes, how much combat you have to defeat to an enemy to actually defeat and take this as a victory. Should you do, most of the time you can flip it over and take it as a trophy. Other times, as in the case of this giant robot, it says you just keep for the reward points. So that does mean you flip it over. And as the reward points, the victory points, we have one. So here we have the last resource also. This would actually cost four of anything. So you can use any mix or match of the resources, be it music, work, or romance, to actually acquire the card. So. The last thing I'm going to say about the Evil X in this case, we see a global effect, which means plus one to robots. Because it's a robot, it would actually take 10 to defeat, not nine. So that's a little bit of the setup. That's a little bit of the cards. We're going to play it as if we're doing a two player game. So we'll set the Evil X to the side over here. One player would take Ramona, set it up over there. The other player would take Scott, and as I said, in the game, what we're doing is you would take the rest of the deck and do roughly two equal piles. It doesn't matter. Don't spend so much time counting out individual cards. It is not that important. And for a two player game, what you're going to do is deal out six cards out on the table. As I said, you have your choice of doing it either or. So we'll go one, two, three, four, make a little bit more room five and six and we have our plot line so the last part of the setup phase we're going to draw out the hands which if you are the first player you're going to take four cards so i'm going to deal one two three and four this is of course after you shuffle the cards and if you're the second player in the case of ramona i'm going to give it a little shuffle shuffle And what we're going to do is draw out five cards if you're the second player. Three, four, five. I'm going to set that aside to the draw side. And now what we're ready to do is actually play the game. So we're going to cut through here. We're going to take a look at the playthrough right now. So in this example of a playthrough, we already have our hands dealt out. I have my character card here. We have the plot line. The first thing we're going to do is go through what's called the elimination phase. This is optional, which means I could take out of the two piles, I could eliminate the card. Why you'd want to eliminate a card is in case of Scott Pilgrim, he only uses romance and music. So if there was a work card, which there isn't, I may want to get rid of the card because it doesn't benefit me in any way. If you're in the case of Ramona, you would want to get rid of the music because she actually uses romance and work. Now, because it is Scott's turn, we're going to go now through the acquisition phase. Because it is the first turn, I only have four cards. So we're going to turn it to the plot line side where I could generate resources. So here we have pouts, which costs me four romance. So I would play a hot mess. And in the hot mess, I could generate three hearts, but it says add one drama to my discard pile. So I'm gonna do that. Put everything into my discard pile. And I've generated three hearts or three romance. And I'm gonna generate one more romance because I have a wild so I can do anything. And here I can match drama to make it worth an additional one resource of anything I choose to. Now, this is only good till the end of the turn. In this case, I don't need to do that. I don't need to match my drama. So I've generated four romance and I can acquire pout, which goes directly into my discard pile. Now, actually what I realized is I could have generated one extra resource because I could have played counted in because as soon as you acquire a card, you can replace it right away and you have your choice to take it from any one of the decks. So in this case, it would be counted in. I have actually a bass solo here where I can actually match drama and get an additional music. So I would match the drama in my hand, get to music, and I will take the counted in. Everything that you played does go into the discard pile right away. And I'm going to take understanding. Here, it costs six romance to acquire and it could actually generate you victory points right away. The whole purpose of the game is to generate victory points. For a two player game, the first one to 10 victory points win. If you're looking to extend the game, because during our numerous playthroughs we found it was actually quite quick the game, 10 victory points. So you can actually extend that to 20 should you want. Now, at this point, I can enter into combat or not. Why I'd want to enter into combat is because I could get victory points for my hand and to try to get closer to the victory point total to win the game. 
or if I choose that, you know, I'm very weak at this phase, I don't really have a chance of defeating anything here, you have a chance to acquire an additional card if you don't want to go into combat. So for the purposes here, we're going to enter into a challenge phase and I'm going to try the evil ring. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw a new hand for my combat. Because I acquired cards during the acquisition phase, now I'm only allowed to draw a new hand of five cards. So one, two, three, four, and five. And well, now we have to look at the challenge. This will be my hand for the combat or for the challenge phase. And here we got the re res oh, excuse me, we have to resolve the fight issue, which it says it first is draw four from your deck. So what this means is every time I draw a drama from my deck, it's not going to be three to defeat. It's actually going to be one additional one. So I draw the last one in my draw pile, which is one. I'm going to shuffle what's remaining into my discard pile. And we're going to go two, three, four. Okay, so I've drawn two drama, so the challenge now becomes up to five. And what I'm allowed to do is, based on this, I'm allowed to exchange only one card from whatever I drew from the deck. So if I look at the combat side, I see there's a various sorts of arrows pointing and whatnot. And this is where the other side of your character card comes into handy. Here we can see we can make combos. So if I play two rights in a row, it'll actually be worth three damage to it. If I could go left up A, it'd be worth five damage and so forth. Here, I don't really have, I do have my two lefts. I don't, I have my two rights, so I can do three. So the lefts here don't really do anything. Um, there's no anything to resolve within the combat phase. So what I'll do is I'll look through what I've drew, uh, what I drew through the fight phase. Here I can match a dramatic deal and additional damage. So what I'll do is I'll just exchange one of the cards to put into my hand, and this all goes back into the discard pile. Now, this is worth five. So there's two ways to deal damage. The first one is called button mashing, which means every time you just play a combat card, it's worth actually one damage towards it. As I said, the second way we can do combos. So in this case, if I could play two right cards, like so, it would actually be worth three damage instead of the two. And as I said here, we can also resolve certain items on the card itself. So here, if I can match a drama, which I have in my hand, it'll be worth an additional one. So if I play right, right, that's actually worth three due to the combo, plus one for four. And now I need to display anything, which could be numbskull. So that would be worth five. I've now defeated the evil ring. So here, on victory, I can eliminate one drama card from my hand or discard pile. In my discard pile, I have a drama. This gets eliminated from the game. And what will happen is everything goes back into the discard. I take evil ring and I get to keep it for the victory point, which is B1. So I keep one point a victory. And now because I went into combat, I will draw a new hand of five cards. One, two, three, four. Again, if you don't have enough, you shuffle put it back into the uh, draw pile and until you could draw up to your five hands. So that's essentially the game in a nutshell. First person to 10 victory points wins the game. We're gonna cut now and we're gonna show you to a wonderful playthrough uh, of how this game actually resolves. So now we're gonna go into a playthrough over here. So we're actually gonna start from refresh. We're gonna deal out a new plot line to show you guys how it is. During my explanation, I actually made a mistake in terms of the victory points, how much I needed to win. It is denoted on the bottom over here, which says 15 if in case of the Katayanagi twins. Where we got 10 from was because we played the tutorial and we see that you actually need 10 victory points to win when it comes to Matthew Patel. So if you want to play a very quick game, Matthew Patel is the way to go. We're gonna try with the Katayanagi twins. So, because Scott will go first, we're going to shuffle our decks over here. We're going to set that aside. We're going to deal out a plot line, which is one, two, three, four, five, and six. Perfect. And I'm going to draw my hand. So I've driven draw four cards because I'm the first player and we have the second player. I picked five. five cards. There we go. So I'm going to take a look at what I can try to do here. And uh, again, turning it so that I have um, 
the resources that we can generate in a given turn. So what I'll do is play a hot mess. I'm going to add a drama to my discard pile. I'm going to generate three music in this case. And then I'm going to play um, actually determination here. Yes, for another music to get jam session. To cost four, I'm going to take that into my hand over here. Everything gets discarded. I'm now going to take the mash note. Um, it doesn't look like I could do, ooh, I can maybe acquire the Barrett Claw, which costs two music. So I'm going to play Natural Talent, generate two music, take two music. Again, goes into the discard pile. And here, what I'm going to do is play Soulmate, but I, as Ramona can also generate Romance, I'm going to actually flip this over to the challenge side, which I'm allowed to do. Perfect. And now, that is pretty much it. That's all I can really play here. So now I get to decide if I want to go into the combat phase. Um, I don't want to do that at this point. I don't feel I'm strong enough to defeat anything yet. So what I will do instead is go right back into the resolution phase where I'm going to draw up back to five cards. So one, two, three, four, five. Now, because I did not enter into combat, I get to draw an additional card. So six cards into my hand. And that is my turn. Okay, so for my turn, what I am going to do is I'm gonna start by playing the subspace shortcut to generate two work and acquire working. I will then place one million hours, which costs four work to acquire into the plot line. Now, as there's not too much more that I can do, I'm going to play Fresh Start and Ninja to generate two romance to pick up the mash note. I will also be able to flip one card from the plot line, so no, Scott, you're not dating knives. Get that. And then I will be adding relaxation to replace it. I will not be using the two drama, which will also end up in my discard pile. Now, with everything being at least a minimum of five, I don't feel I'm all that strong enough to go into combat, and I'd rather generate some resources. I will draw back up to six cards. One, two, three, four, five. I will then shuffle my hand. Perfect. So while he's shuffling... And go back up to six cards. And now it is Scott's turn. Four, five, and there's not much I could really do here. So what we will take a look at is... Hmm, 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 hmm. Well, I can match a drama for a two, and I'll do two romance, why not? I will do four romance, so I'm gonna actually take one more romance just in case. We're gonna see if I could do anything with that, just to take a relaxation, put that into my discard pile with everything else. I'm now gonna put a commitment on there. And there's not much else I can do. So again, what I'm going to try doing here is actually go into the combat or the challenge phase where I will try going against the ninjas. Now, in the ninjas, first thing I'm going to do is drop off a new card of five. One, two, three, four, five. And actually, sorry, it's not five cards. It's there's no versus drawn when drawing your hand for combat, only draw four cards. So actually, I will put one back. And now we will try to deal five damage. So I'm going to flip my character card over just to see what the combos I can play. And let's take a look here. So I need to deal five damage. Perfect. So what I will do here, oops, 
play the kitchen sink. I can't match a drama, so that's one, but it's a right. I play another right to deal with the base charter, so that's three. Now, because I played a right, I can activate this uh, combat power, which is to draw one card. So I will actually draw an additional card into my hand. And so I've done three. I will button mash to play left and an A, each for one additional damage. So I was three, four, and five. I have now defeated the ninjas. And it, the reward for beating it is to flip and keep. So I flip it, I get Wallace Wells as a friend, and I get to get two victory points, which I'll hold here. And it says on acquisitions, I may flip or eliminate one card in the plot line. So first thing I have to do is play on a card to replace the ninjas, and I'm allowed to flip a card should I choose. Um, you also may eliminate one to get rid of I also may eliminate one, that is true. So let me get rid of the work, because that will not benefit me at all. And instead, I'm going to put in the fourth wall. Perfect. So I will discard and now draw my new hand for the resolution phase. Okay, one, so two. while he's drawing his hand, I'm going to play the mysterious card. Match with a one drama to generate generate an additional heart. I will play Haunting Shoes to generate additional romance. And then with the fresh start, I'll generate four romance to add the commitment to my deck. And I'll discard all of that. And then also add the fourth wall to the plot line. And I will then use this, and as there's no unmatch draw on my end, this is worth four work, which will let me acquire the fourth wall into my hand. And as there's nothing great, I will add the more difficult thing to acquire is the solo. And I will see what I can do versus Knives Chow. It's not maybe the widest idea, but we play a win. So I will go into combat with Knives Chow. I will draw five cards. One, two, three, four, and five. Combos I can do. So before you do that, it says here versus draw two drama plus two. So I will go into my deck, I will draw two cards. If I were to pull a drama, I would add two difficulty to the challenge. Unfortunately, I don't have any. So what I can do still by drawing the cards is I can replace one of these two with an existing card into my hand, which while he's seeing if he can beat that card, I will decide if I want to replace any of these cards. So, the first thing I will do is I'm going to start off with playing the up surprise, which will make me draw one card. I may then discard a card. The next card, so I will now have to shuffle my deck in case I need to pull anything out of it. play a right matched with one drama to draw a card. I will then play a, so that is two damage, that will be three damage, that is four damage. And as there is no unmod strong in my hand, this is worth an additional one for a total of five, six damage, defeating the challenge of Knives Chow. So I will acquire Knives Chow, and as it says, flip and keep, and then I get to draw an extra card in resolution. So I gain Knives Chow as an ally, two victory points. I then draw one, two, three, four, five, six, because of the victory conditions on the card. And I will add the subspace door. 
Perfect. So now, what do I want to do? So I'm going to play for my turn. The bass solo matching with the drama for an additional one music. So that would be two. I'm going to play another music for another two. So that's four music resource total. And I get to draw a card and then discard one card. Which could be this and six for the solo. So I have acquired a solo. I'm going to put in either in the combat phase this turn, draw one bonus card, and then do Okay. And then on acquisition, I have to add in drama. So I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to put fine tuning in, and I'm going to play three music to get the fine tuning. But I have to add a drama to my deck. That's what it said for the card. And we'll put the dream apartment for 12 large resources of anything. Now, do I want to enter combat? I'm not really sure I do. But just for the sake of the videos, why not? Let me try doing the subspace ambush. Ooh, that's only four. That's going to be hard. But let's give it a try. Why not? One, two, three, and four. This is not gonna go well. Let's see what I so can you get. You notice that the subspace ambush is challenge level eight, generates three victory points. Now, if there was any cards that he had that were related to subspace, he may get a bonus during this combat. But I don't, so I'm gonna be playing that. I get to draw a card, but I will absolutely fail miserably. So, Discard everything and I have to discard one card after doing a new resolution. So I will draw one card Two three four five To restock my hand and then I have to discard after resolution so I will do that and it stays in the plot line so for my turn, I'm going to start by playing Commitment, which allows me to draw two cards and generates one victory point. An important thing to note that this generation of victory points only counts during your turn. So if this was going to be my 15th point, I would then win the game. However, as I'm not going to be using that victory point during the game, it does not stay. So I will draw two cards, add it to my hand. I will then have to reshuffle. I discard file. Alright, let's see what fun fun things I can do now. So the first thing I will do is generate one moment and match a drama with it. You're off screen. So as you see, mysterious match. So that's one romance. I will generate a second romance. So that's a total of three. I will then generate another one resource of anything, which lets me draw a card, and I will eliminate one card from the plot line. And I draw another card into my deck and so I got to have one, two, three. Now I have a total of let's see one, two, three, four romance. So I will actually then make it a total of five to get the subspace door. And that is all of my resources. Now, unfortunately, I actually have a lot of drama in my hand, which is not a good thing for Ramona, as I cannot use the abilities on these cards. I can only generate two work. So, I will unfortunately have to add a music card in here. I will then discard my hand. But as I'm looking pretty good for, for combat, I will then 
neutral, and as my ability with knives, I can flip a card in the plot line. So you know what? I'm gonna flip the dark apartment and see. It's just a tiny robot. So I will go into combat with the tiny robot. I will then draw my cards. One, two, three, four. So as he's drawing, you see there's no versus draw for this card, but it is a robot, so the Katanagi twins adds one to the difficulty. Yep. So I need to do a total of five damage to the robot. So four and five. Just button mash it. <laughs> yeah, so as you can see with what I have here, I can literally just button mash this. I actually don't need to do a combo, but we'll just go improvise, combo. So that's three, four. And you know what, I'm gonna play this one. Because on victory, I can then eliminate a card from the plot line. So I will take the tiny robot for victory points, and I will eliminate from either your hand or your discard. You pile. eliminate one card, not and then on victory, line. eliminate one drama card from your hand or discard pile, which I am not able to do. So I'm going to eliminate tragic inspiration from the game. This is all now discarded. We shall reset with the recording studio and a giant robot. And I will draw up to five cards. So what we have here now is I could go through the elimination phase because this work it has no use to me, so I will eliminate that. And now, I don't have much I can do, but what I can do is play a Mooch, match a Drama for an additional uh, resource. I will also play Awkward Solution, match a Drama to that for two, so I have one, two, three, four. For a fourth wall, I will eliminate, or I will acquire that card. I'm gonna play a Count It In. And that is my turn. Um, I can try going into combat, but I don't know how good this is going to go if I try going for a drama. But you know what? Let's go for it because I like to risk. So we will go against the giant robot. Oh, it is actually a five. All right. Hmm. So what I will play is, it's not much I can do. I'll play left for one, up for two. I get to draw a card. And I really can't do much more than that. Three, four, and fail horribly. So I fail again, I will draw a new hand, one, two, three, four, and five, whoops. And I will get rid of one of the cards as per the failure. And that is my turn. All right, so this is definitely a little bit more challenging for me because there's really just not too much that works well in my favor currently in the pot line. So the first thing I'm gonna play is a subspace door. It's gonna go right to my discard, and it's gonna let me up, draw up to two cards, which are unfortunately both drama. I may also flip two cards in the plot line, so why don't we bring some more challenges out, and maybe something that I can beat later on. So, I'll then generate one romance to flip a card in the plot line. And that just doesn't really work as well as I would have hoped. So what I'm then going to do is I'm going to generate three resources. And I can't do anything because I have drama. However, with the fresh start, once during this turn, you may spend three resources to eliminate drama from my hand. As you've seen, drama's been slowing me down. I'm going to eliminate one of the dramas. Discard. 
I'm going to put everything into my discard pile. And as there's some bullies on the table, why don't we see if I can kick their butts? So I've got a total of three. And the versus draw is one. I will draw one. It does. It is not a drama. And I will see if I want to replace anything within my hand. Um, might as well do this. Okay. Four and five. So their challenge is only four. So let's see what I got here. I don't have any combos I can do. But as there are only four, I can just go one, two, three, four. I can also, this would let me draw a card, then discard a card. So I can draw one card, discard a card. This is five. So I do a total of five. Didn't really need to discard it, but it's all right. So I beat them. And the bonus for the bullies is it lets me draw two extra cards after beating them for the next turn. So I'm going to put Scott Pilgrim as a challenge out there and draw a total of seven cards. Seven. Perfect. So now in my turn, what I will do is, first and foremost, I'm going to play a jam session, generate two music. I could then draw and discard a card. So I will draw Determination. I will play, oh, I have to discard a card, sorry. So I will discard um, I will discard Hot Mess. And what I will do is then play three. So if I enter the combat, I could draw one bonus card if I go into the drama. Um, so that is five music total. I'm also gonna play one heart and flip Scott Pilgrim as I'm allowed to flip one card in the plot line. So I have five music, one romance. It's cost five, so I'll use the five music to acquire Scott Pilgrim as a friend. I will now replace that with pet names and with the one romance I will acquire pet names. For that what I will do is, 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 put subspace shift in and I can't really do much more in this turn here. So I will enter into combat against the evil mastermind which is a draw one and drama plus two. So you would draw one, two, three, four, and five. So I'm shuffling my discard as I need to draw. And the versus draw is draw one. I can then decide whether I keep a card or not. And thankfully for myself, I am gonna keep the card I drew and discard the one drama. Do I want to switch who I'm fighting against? It's too late, isn't it? Yep. Damn it. Oh, so we're going to fight against the evil masterman. So it's only six of the challenge. Scott automatically adds one damage into the combat phase. I drew an extra card this turn only because of the card's ability I had played. Now, if we go to the combat side, let's see how much I can do. So, can I, can I, hmm, so I have one, two, three, four, five, okay. So perfect, so what I will do is play burn for one, up, draw a card for two, then play launch pad match for an additional damage. We have one, two, three, four, five.
five from Scott Pilgrim and Numbskull for six. The evil mastermind is defeated and I will draw two cards after drawing a new hand in resolution. So this is defeated. I will put slap there. Everything gets discarded and I will draw now seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. And seven. Okay, so my first thing, I'm gonna play a subspace door, draw two cards. One, two. And I'll flip two cards in the plot line. Okay, so which one do I want to flip? I'll try flipping the Dark Obsession to see. Ooh. That's interesting. Once during your turn, you may match drama to soulmate to draw one card. So, let's see what I want to do. I'm going to first play one working for, for, two, for two work, that then becomes four work, six work. Okay, that is now seven. Seven work. So with the seven work, I'm going to buy a friend with a car. As a power up. So in my next phase, I get an extra combat. I will also acquire the subspace shift. And that is everything that I've now played. I will then put up the throw up as well as the teacup spin. So rope costs four. So that is one work. And we flip a card in, a pl in the plot line. So I don't want to make this easy to get. Let's put it back to being a challenge. So I'm going to take Grow Up. I will then discard the rest because there's nothing I can do with it. And since this is taking longer than we expected, we shall then cut to a battle with the Evil Axe. I will try to beat the Kata Yanagi twins and see what happens there. So they are a total of 10. So I have to do a total of 10 damage. So I'm going to draw one, two, three, and I get an additional card from this, which means that's why I decided this turn is the best opportunity. So three, four, four, five, six. So. No matter what, I'm doing six damage. Now I just need to figure out the best way to do said damage. So I will start off with the Barroom Brawl. I cannot match drama. I'll then hit it with a wild swing for three. Followed by a another block and another left so that would also be another three so I'm at a total of six seven because I don't have any match drama target is combat subspace you may flip an eliminating card from the pot right unfortunately that isn't up that's an eight I'm at nine so I just barely miss Unfortunately, beating the evil X. All right. So there's no failure in this case. You just try it again. But it's also important to note, even if he did beat the evil X, he doesn't necessarily win the game because it only gives you five victory points. But also, just to give you an example, I actually misplayed my hand. So if I've been paying more attention, and as we're just gonna wrap it here, this is a long playthrough. You guys know how to play the game. This goes one, two. With the up for sleepy time and a whopping five damage. Six, seven, 
Eight. Eight. Nine. So, you know what? No matter what, I couldn't have done it. I was just one short. But as Evil X has no negatives, it doesn't affect anything. There would go back there. I discard my cards. And I draw one, two, three, four, five. So you guys know how to more or less play the game. You will continue until you get to five. The one thing I do want to show is as there's a lot of challenge cards out here, what we can also do, remember, is after the elimination phase, you don't need to acquire cards. So, so we'll give an example you of the just, phase. Well, we did, but... So we just eliminate bad dreams, why for not? example. That's what he'd start doing. But now what I can do if I want to try also going against the Katarina Nagi twins, I could just discard my whole hand and right away enter combat phase. By doing so, I actually get to draw an additional card. So three, four, five, and the additional card would actually be six. So here's another way to play strategically if there's a lot of challenge cards. So if I'm trying to go and kill the Katyanagi twins, let's see if I can do this, and if not, then we'll just cut the video. But that being said, I am so close, and yet so far. Here we go. So, I would play Oh, I don't even have any right cards. Wow. So I play left and up. I would actually get to draw a card. And then I would play A. So I would do five damage. With Scott's power, it would be six. So I already have six. And now I just need to do four more. And you have it just And I have it just from playing the cards. So let's just see it. So go seven, eight, nine, and 10. So I don't actually need to do any more combos. So it would be defeated. So again, I don't win the game here, but I do have five more victory points for a total currently of nine. And then I would again draw the hand. So one, two, three, four, five. So because this would have 15 points to actually win, we're gonna cut here. If you guys understand more or less the playthrough, you keep going until you hit the amount of victory points required as designated by the evil X. So keep playing and we're gonna cut now to a review of the game. So Scott Pilgrim's precious little card game. What do you think? You know what, at the end of the day, it is a fun little game. It is very quick, which is both works for it and against it. What do you think? I, I gotta say, I'm definitely disappointed in the game. I would say if the game was better advertised on the box as being a quick game, I'd be a lot happier with it. But the fact that it is a deck building game and it can be played so quickly, I just don't think it feels like a Scott Pilgrim game the way it's built. And it's true, we've done multiple run-throughs of the game and I think only one time did it actually take so long to actually build a decent deck and we had to defeat the Evil X to actually win the game. The whole idea of Scott Pilgrim is to defeat your Evil X, not just to get victory points out of random little cards that you can play. I mean, it's awesome, it's great to be awesome at life, which is part of the point of the game, but we all really want to beat the Evil X's and you know, hook up with Ramona. I mean, that's the whole point of the entire comic book series, the movie, and the video game. But the fact that you also have the natural author, the original author, to do all the artwork on the cards, that's pretty cool. It does capture the whimsical nature of Scott Pilgrim. So for me, I would give it about a 5 on 10. Yeah, I, I'd be a little bit harsh right now. I'll give it a 4 on 10. And the main reason for that is just the mechanics and the components. The fact that the cards are dual-sided, it does sort of work, but it feels like they were just trying to cheap out to save a, a little bit of cash from what they put into the box. The other thing I would say is with a bunch of the times that we played, we also tried the co-op mode. The biggest issue was, uh, like Sam here won probably most of the time because he pretty much pulled a god hand. And in the first round or two, he had so much steam that he was just so far ahead that it just wasn't fun. And when the game's advertised as being 30 to 60 minutes, we found that the game tended to be closer to 15 minutes to 30 minutes. We've yet to play a game that could go about 60 minutes. So again, if you're looking for a quick game to pick up, absolutely, it's a wonderful game to play. If you just have to fill in some time here and there, 
Great game to pick up. If you're looking for that full Scott Pilgrim, check out the Xbox 360 game. Much better. You get to yeah. beat the asses of those evil axes. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely pick up the Xbox Live Arcade game that they had for Scott Pilgrim. Probably also available on PS4. Much better game. And you get to always punch people in the face. Which I think is a lot of what Scott Pilgrim's about. Hey, thanks very much for watching, guys. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe. It won't cost you any gold. It won't cost you any XP. It's perfect. Also, if there's anything you'd like to see us review next, please let us know in the comments below. And as always, feedback is appreciated. And once again, we are Dyson Dragons. My name is Jason Deer. I'm Sammy G. Remember, grab a drink, grab your buddy, and, and keep on playing. Keep on playing games. Cheers. Cheers.